Hello, this is Voxor Recaps, and in this video you're going to learn about the steps I took to optimize my Voxel physics engine to simulate 16 times larger scenes in real time on a laptop. A few years ago, I got my first computer with an AMD CPU, the 5900X. That 12-core CPU nearly broke me at first when my simulation performed worse on it than my much older 6-core Intel 8700K. Since then, I've made major improvements to the multi-threading of my simulations, and now it pretty much scales linearly to number of cores. Recently, I've been intrigued by Intel CPUs and their high total core counts, and on Black Friday last year, I was able to get a very good deal on a laptop with a 3900HX and 4080. Memory bandwidth has long been a problem with my simulations. I have a unified particle model, which simulates anything from gas to liquid to solid. But that also meant I was always tracking the 3x3 three three deformation gradient for all particles. In total, each particle would take 48 bytes of memory. I do kind of like the look it gives, as it makes some thin features of liquids more visible so for a long time, I felt that the extra bandwidth is worth it. Profiling my simulations on the 3900HX, the memory bandwidth issue became more clear. What I decided to do was to separate my materials into groups. I would continue to track the deformation gradients for elastic materials, but liquids would just be rendered using their position and velocity. With this style, you only need to send position each frame and velocity can be calculated by using the previous frame's upload buffer. During the rewrite, because it was all about specialization for different materials, I also introduced the concept of structured particles. I've known for a long time that with the material point method, the steps where particles gather and scatter data to the grid can be merged to improve performance and reduce memory bandwidth by not requiring velocity gradient data be stored in a temporary buffer. But with the shape matching I do for the rigid bodies, these two steps have to be kept separate as the shape matching needs to be done in between for maximum stability. But with my new structured particle system and improved multi-threading, each structure can do its own G2P shape match and P2G for its particles. Each structure can have multiple clusters, and what I'm working on now is linkages between clusters. Another advantage, speed-wise, is structured particles don't need to be sorted for cache coherence. You can just spawn them initially in a space-filling curve, something I'm not doing just yet, but maybe plan to, and reorder them when destruction occurs. Currently, them being in clusters already helps a lot with cache coherence. With these optimizations done, it was now maxing out my high refresh rate gaming monitor. I was curious and decided to see what would happen if I increased the world size. I went from 128 cubed to 512 by 512 by 128, and even then, performance seemed okay. I was pretty excited, so I made a video showing this new large world size, but a viewer rightfully observed that that water was shallow as heck. This moved multi-grid pressure and adaptive level of detail from somewhere in the middle of my to-do list to the very top. First step was switching to a sparse grid. I'd been wanting to do it for a while, as theoretically it should make the simulation faster for CPUs with vCache, as it is more likely that occupied grid tiles would remain in cache. I wasn't expecting a big performance increase for non-vCache CPUs and just wanted to get it done before I added the multi-grid code. It ended up being faster for all my machines that I tested it on. After that, I added particle adaptivity based on distance to the player as well as distance from the surface. For performance reasons, 
distance to surface is calculated at a tile resolution, so in a completely flat world, it takes a while to get to lower levels of detail. Also, I've been using a higher gravitational constant to try to make things feel faster and not in slow-mo. This causes the liquid to compress a little bit easily. So it was important to calculate pressure on another lower coarser scale to help the water build up depth more quickly so the lower level of details can be activated. Now that I had gotten acceptably deep water, it was time to simulate some sand. I really needed to validate that my plan of doing specialized code for different material types was the right way of going about it. So I made a deal with myself that I could not go and see Dune Part 2 until I got sand working to make myself extra motivated. One PCIe transfer bandwidth optimization I made with the sand was instead of sending over the deformation gradient data as floats, I just send over bytes, reducing that bandwidth by a factor of four. Now that I had the different material types, it was time to put them all together, so I added one emitter for each material type. At first, as expected, the renderer was completely broken, but I fixed it up and added Intel ZGTAO for ambient occlusion, which stands for ground truth ambient occlusion, not grand theft auto online. With the NPM stuff somewhat done, I wanted to start adding more of a landscape and making the scenes more interesting. So I got block editing working and then imported a highly inaccurate voxel model of New York City I made one morning. I think it'll be important for me to improve my skills with Magicka Voxel so I can improve the in-game voxel editing experience. And now my focus will be on the structured particle system. I recently got my voxels rendering using the Amanatides and Wu algorithm in a way similar to Teardown, and now I will have to figure out how to apply voxel data modifications. This will also lead to a PCIe transfer bandwidth reduction for my structures, since I will no longer be sending over positions for all structured particles, and faster lighting volume construction as well as more accurate crosshair picking up of structured objects, as I plan to just do a simple raycast. One thing I will be keeping in mind and let simmer is how I will handle particles moving between the structured systems and the unstructured system, as well as between material groups for phase changes. Thanks for watching and please check back in the future. With voxels, there are always more steps to be taken.